You might have seen our Grand Design Momentum 410 THR prototype video a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and a lot of you guys had a lot of questions, and we're going to try to get to those. And we have a special guest with us to go over your questions and suggestions. This hey guy. Guys. As Chad just mentioned, when we put out the video about the prototype, we did get a lot of questions from you guys and we want to address those because there is a reason for everything that we all did in this RV. And we have Lance, if you remember him from the prototype reveal video, this is Lance Lees. He is the product manager for the Momentum line. So we thought we would just go one by one mm -hmm. on all of these suggestions and questions and answer them for you right now. I would like to also add before we jump into the details, just in general, when designing an RV, a lot of people had some really good ideas that just are not possible with physics. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you move one little thing, it cascades into three other things. And so it's a tight dancing game of Tetris to get one of these things together. Yeah, and to that point, I wanna say, I give you guys a ton of credit. I don't think I ever thought it was easy, but I didn't realize how difficult it actually can be. Now think about it like this. Designing an RV and making it as spacious as possible is tough with just a regular RV, right? Now you're in toy hauler world, mm. and with our situation, 13 and a half feet of this RV is dedicated to the garage. So you've got even less space to work with to make it as functional and spacious as you possibly can. And that's where a lot of this give and take that we talked about in the prototype video comes into play. Mm -hmm. Let's just jump right into the questions that you guys asked us so that we can get to answering them. Mm -hmm. You want me to jump on the first one? Yeah, let's do it. The first one was just flip the campsite and other side and it'll be great to get all those main windows right. over here. Right. And we kind of knew that this might be something that we heard from you guys, mm -hmm. but there is a reason for it. And basically there's no wall space over here, right? Yeah. With the entry door being on the camp side, it limits the width of the slide box and the off door side slide is actually longer than our, your camp side. So if you were to flip it, you were to lose the dinette and it would change the landscape of it at all. And yeah. giving work credit where credit's due, Chad and Tara did a really good job of challenging me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we we tried, we to, tried to do that. You guys did, and I think the 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 outcome is obvious. You know, we, utilizing every nook and cranny for storage and for seating and we're overwhelming response already. We couldn't be more excited to take it to Hershey and get it out in the dealer's lots. and. And even more so for you guys to get moving to your so new I, home. Yeah, I'm excited about that. The amount of windows and natural light in this unit is amazing. And I want to <laughs> say I've been in a ton of Class A RVs, and they don't have nearly the amount of natural light mm -hmm. coming in as something like this. And I mean, there's still, as you can see, windows here, windows here, and all this natural light. So mm -hmm. for us, we were okay with that sacrifice. Didn't really see it as a sacrifice really at all yeah. to get more seating. And we talked to a couple of 399 TH owners because mm. it's in the exact same situation with the, the windows all on that side. And some of them just said, you know, you're just a little more purposeful in how you look for campsites. So mm. if you've got a side patio, if you've got windows on that side, you start looking at campsites a little bit differently thinking, oh, I want to be on this end because that'll face out this yeah. way. But either way, when you're in RV parks, you got neighbors on both sides. It's just, you know, you, you're you pick and choose and <laughs> this is one of those good examples of we had to make some sacrifices to get this kind of space in here next question we got was can you see the tv from every seat on this side of the rv and you can sitting here see the tv fine that is awesome and i think you guys were talking about that's one of the reasons why the faucet's on this side 100 percent. we shifted the sink and the faucet so you have more open countertop space, but also if you have a super sofa or in Chad Terra's case, the dinette table, you can have guests sitting over there and still have a good shot at the TV. Mm -hmm. But for everyday use of owners, you know, with the L-shaped sofa, you've got direct eyesight of the TV, which is always ideal because no one wants to be watching like this if it's their RV. Yeah. Like yeah. When we first started looking at RVs and they had the super sofa this way and the TV down yeah. here, it was like, I know. Well, <laughs> and like going from the 397, it's good TV placement, but like being able to sit directly in front of it is going to be yeah. a really nice uh, change yeah. for y'all. Yeah. Oddly enough, we got somebody the other day that said, I wish the island wasn't as big. <laughs> that to me, I was like, 
he could go bigger. <laughs> but I think he was thinking that the island would impede on the view of the TV and it does not. We also had a, a really good suggestion that said, why don't they stop putting carpet in RVs? That there's, happened there's, a long time there's ago, There's no carpet guys. in here. Nope, <laughs> not now. We all flush floor slides, all lit out, like it blends in and really makes it feel more open. The next thing that we got a lot of questions about is this area right here. This is the televator slash like dual purpose countertop prep space if you wanna use it like that. A lot of people were saying, is the TV too close to the stove? And that was something that, you know, maybe because I don't like to cook, <laughs> that it didn't bother me. No, I'm kidding. But for our situation right now in the 397, we have about the same amount of space. Oh yeah, actually a little, the stove, bit, a little bit more here. Yeah, between the stove and the wall. And I'm gonna tell you, there's been zero splatters on that wall in the five years that we've lived in it. So for me, I didn't see that as an issue at all. In fact, you can use this whole space as prep space because Lance, you can put weight on this, right? Yeah, of course. I look at it as you guys have guests over for hors d'oeuvres or you know maybe a Sunday morning Bloody Mary bar. That's an area that could be used when you're not using the TV. Mm -hmm. And just trying to maximize the countertop space for just all the different ways you go camping. Right. One of the concerns was spilling in here too. And if you're, you're gonna do any preparing on here, maybe just put a cutting board down over it. I mean, yeah. but, uh, there are a lot of little simple hacks to RV life because you're gonna have compromises and details like this where sure it's, you know, it, it could happen, but you know, you find ways around it. And the thing is somebody else, well, actually quite a few people said, but I can't really see the TV when I'm cooking if it's right here. Actually, you can see it a lot more in this space than in our 397. Mm -hmm. I can't see it at all in the 397 because it's several feet in front of me from the kitchen, right? In this situation, if you have the TV up, you will definitely, I mean, it's behind you. You can watch it while you're cooking all day long. You know, when I great. when I wash dishes sometimes and want to watch TV, I watch the reflection in the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're so smart. I mean, yeah. Being aware of you know, the TV being there, and you maybe ha have the TV up while you're cooking made it that much more important to have this large island offsetting the, the sink to give you this extra large space for cutting tomatoes or anything that could potentially spill. And this could be really more of a storage area or a presentation area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, let me address anybody that was concerned that the corners are too sharp. Oh yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not. It, you know, things always look a little bit different in video. Yeah. It's actually kind of hard to capture how big this space is on video. We've had people walk in here already and be like, oh, this looks a lot bigger yeah. than it did on the video. For sure. Sorry. There's no way we can have all these people in our current RV. Look at that. For us, flexible space in an RV to be able to use it multiple ways is so important and such a good idea. And so that's why, like in my mind, having this as a TV or prep space or whatever you want to use it for, you know, you can do it either way. And that's what I love because we don't watch a whole lot of TV in here anyhow. Another thing that people brought up was the accessibility of the three big ones during travel days, right? Your refrigerator, your toilet, and your bed. Mm -hmm. And again, this is another one of those things where preferably if we could, we would have the fridge accessible, but it isn't. Right. Uh, we're thinking we're gonna probably put one of those powered coolers in the bay down have there. Have you seen how big the basement is? <laughs> yeah. There's, There's plenty of room there. But the big one for us, you know, in, after, in traveling for five years, the big one is the toilet. As right. long as we can get to our toilet. We've never really used the bed in closed mode, but we could if we needed to in right. either model. When we stop for lunch on our travel days, we usually put the campsite out. You know, we park on this left end and put this side out anyway. So if we stop for lunch, we're gonna be able to get to all the stove, microwave, and fridge and all that. Another benefit of having this stuff on this side. Mm -hmm. All right, next on the list is the pantry. Now, I thought that the pantry was still a really large size pantry. Is it as big as the one we have right now? Um, width wise, I'd say yes. Depth wise, not as much, but again, one of those give and takes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And additionally, some tweaks that we might be able to make to that would be to make the shelves a little bit deeper in there. So at least utilize the depth that's in there without the edges of the shelves truncating that. Well, and there was a reason for the depth of the pantry, right? 
Right. Of course, we always want the paint to be deep as possible. Um, with this one, we had the half bath behind it, but also we had you know, the clearance for the slide to come through and clear the door handle. Mm -hmm. But thanks to you guys' feedback, we kind of looked at it again, and we've got some ideas on how we can add a little bit more, just uh, you know, make the best it possibly can. Right. It's and all about those little tweaks. An no extra inch here, extra inch there. Yeah, there's no bad feedback. Yeah. And remember, guys, this is still just the prototype. So mm. that's why we are working through all these things right now. And your feedback has been very helpful and important. So thank you. I would like to also add, we mentioned this in our first video, but we'll re-mention it again here because it was still brought up, was the, the width of the sofa and its proximity to the dining table. Mm -hmm. There's already a fix in for that. It'll be in production. We're shortening that section, moving it over and making more room. We all know that there's currently not enough room to maneuver around the dinette. So we all know that and it's just, it's happening. Yeah, it just that, hasn't happened that fixes yet. it on that one. Yeah, yeah so uh, with the changes we're making, it'll add an extra four inches. Uh, we also changed the backer and the dinette table so we can center it up because there is actually quite a bit of room there, but without being able to center the dinette table due to the backers, that's the problem we ran into. So those of you who are coming to Hershey know ahead of time that, uh, that that's already being fixed and yeah. don't you worry, yours will be it set up be, properly. It's not gonna be done in time for Hershey, right? It's still gonna be prototyped right. at Hershey. This unit right here today is the one that will be going to Hershey. You guys can see it uh, here in a couple weeks. Yeah. And uh, we'll be doing, making a couple little tweaks just to make it that much better. Again, thanks to the feedback that we're getting from all y'all in chat and Tara. And speaking of Hershey, we are going to be there. We are going to have a little bit of a meetup time. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter on our email list because that's where we're going to announce it. So let's move back to the front of the rig towards the bedroom. Right. To get to the bedroom, we got to go through the bathroom and that brings us to another suggestion slash question. What is it? And okay, I'm going to tell you. For us living in the 397 for almost five years and having that small bathroom, we were totally totally okay with this change, right? In fact, we were all for it. So what this is, is some people were concerned about having a pass-through bathroom. I don't care because guess what? It's like three times the size now. Yeah, again, it's a trade-off, right? Yeah. Yes, you gotta go through the bathroom to get to the bedroom, but the thing we like about that versus having the bathroom in the front, which is what some of you suggested is, you know, it still is also a guest bathroom. If mm -hmm. my daughters come and stay in the back and, the, mm -hmm. and when it's in guest suite mode, they would use our shower and stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. At least this way they can get to it without going through the bedroom. Yeah, you don't have to clean your bedroom for people to walk through to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice. Every floor plan is not for everyone, but in this particular case, it is something so different. The advantage to it is that you, typically you'd have that three foot of hallway space now you're gaining it to make your bathroom that much larger. Mm -hmm. Realistically, like the distance going to the bedroom is the same, but you just have more floor space and more storage. And we sat down and we listed like any, any objection, any negative reason to not have this. And we were able to overcome them all. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if the layout's not for everyone, yes, but you know, one of them was the reason we enclosed the bathroom stall and vented it so you can have privacy a private commode but you get three foot countertop space a bank of drawers for storage linen storage and typically in toy haulers as you guys know mm -hmm. you get out of the shower and you don't have a lot of room to dry off and this one it's going to oh, feel yeah. more like home yeah i had uh, to dry my hair currently in the little i call it the hallway but you know outside <laughs> of the bathroom like the landing well, part your, of the your steps head, your head sticks out yeah. like this yeah because there's no space. <laughs> and, and so you just mentioned the door to the commode and mm -hmm. that was another concern that people had. I wanna do some measurements to find out exactly, but I was paying attention to the area around the toilet in the 397 and it's very, very limited floor space around the toilet mm. in, in our current bathroom. We were very particular about how we set this bathroom up to make sure that it didn't feel claustrophobic, to make sure you had the shore width. And I'm a pretty big guy and I'm, I'm totally comfortable in there, but we, we were cognizant of that, but we also wanted to make sure that it was it was more than enough, but without closing off the, mm -hmm. the bathroom it, uh, itself. So the thing is we have had a couple of people who did not like having a door to <laughs> the water closet to each their own. I would prefer to have a door for myself and for him. But the thing is, you can take the door off the hinges if you want to, or if you, and if you want to keep the door open, you can always just close the main door that leads out to the living room as well. So there are always workarounds. <laughs> that magnet is so hard. <laughs> it's such a hard, such, such a strong magnet. Yeah, we, we put like some rubber stick on feet things on there. Yeah, yeah. For us, that 
triple the bathroom space is so worth having this pass through. I mean, I can't wait to have that bathroom. I'm so excited. Last but not least, if, if you choose to not get the half bath option and you do in have guests over, correct, in the garage, if you do have guests over, they need to use the bathroom, now they can go in there and have their privacy mm -hmm. and you can still roam freely amongst the cabin. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that was a question some had too about is the bathroom optional? And it is, you can have it or not have it. If you've got bigger toys back there, mm -hmm. side by sides, then you probably want to opt out of the bathroom. And we'll touch base on a little bit more of the garage questions that we got in just a minute. Another concern a few of you had was the steps going up there and there not being a handrail. There wasn't, and there still is in this prototype, but there is a plan to put one there. Yeah, no, we're working on that, and we want to make sure it was, you know, the right size, the right look, and the right location. Okay, next up, people were asking about the little nightstands next to the bed and saying that it didn't look like there was a lot of room on the side of the bed. We didn't mention that that is a king size bed in there. You can get a queen size option. That will of course give you more space along the sides. I haven't seen what the like nightstand stuff looks like for those, but I'm assuming it's bigger space, right? And that's where sometimes in the camera and the photo shoots, it doesn't quite do the unit justice. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the same nightstands we've been using for years. Of course, we love the feedback and always want to make product development changes, but there's enough room on there to sit your phone, have a glass of water, but we don't want it to intrude into like your sleeping space yeah. where you're like rolling over and hitting your head. Mm -hmm. So any suggestions on how to do that differently or better, please let us know. But you guys, we've had the same bedroom setup as it is currently, like with the bed and the little nightstands for five years. So we're used to it. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really seem like a big deal. And now we've got all that extra space between the foot of the bed and the dresser and mm -hmm. stuff. So it feels so much bigger in there. So for us, having a king size bed was more important yeah. than having um, more space along the sides. Everything's a trade off. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> you want to talk about like the garage stuff, outside stuff now? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Number one, in the basement, we go in the basement or? We can do wherever you oh, want. Okay. In the basement, those supports along there, those, those beams will not be there in production. That was just for the prototype. You've got something else you're going to use to shore that up. So that will all be completely open under there. We wanted it to be as much open space as possible for bicycles or racks or whatever. Uh, so we found some ways to reinforce that span and uh, make it happen. So. Oh my gosh, that space down there is yeah. killer. And now you take the, the, the beams away that are in the middle mm -hmm. like that. That's, that's amazing. Next up in the garage is the half bath topic. Now for us, all we need is a half bath, mm -hmm. basically an extra toilet and an extra sink. That's really all we've needed for the past five years. As you guys know, if you've watched us for a while, our shower turned into a storage area. Golf so, club. Yeah. So we figured let's take that extra space and use it for larger living room space. We did get some people who were disappointed that there wasn't a full bath in there. We expected that, you guys. We did a poll, gosh, probably a year or so ago now at this point. Mm -hmm. It was literally 50-50 on who wanted a full bath versus who wanted a half bath. So we decided to go with our experience and that's why we went with half bath. Yeah, and I don't even know if you could do a full bath in the garage with this type of layout, simply because the full bath in our 397, it completely encroaches on the living area. Right. It's one of the reasons we don't have much living area in there. Well, you could, yeah. right, Lance? But then there'd be no space in the garage. You lose your pantry, you lose your yeah. hutch. And you know, from a product development standpoint too, like. It's great to have that option to have or have not uh, for, to your point, for larger side-by-sides. And we also make it so you've got plenty of width for almost any stock side-by-side -side or golf cart. You can pull all the way up and utilize the space. And if you want a full bath, we have an option for it. It's mm -hmm. a 397. If you, know, you want a different, better bathroom arrangement with a little bit you know, more open floor space, the 410's your guy. Right. Something else in the garage, some people wanted the washer and dryer hookups in the garage, mm -hmm. which I've been in garages where there's washer and dryer back there and it takes up so much space. It's very difficult to vent. Yeah, and yeah. because that's our office and we are back there more than really any other space in this RV for working, we don't want the noise of the washing machine going. Yes. I know that having the washer and dryer hookups in the closet does take some of that valuable storage space away, but we're used to that and that was something that we were okay with to keep it up there. I like having the laundry up there because I can fold it on the bed, put it all away and without moving. And especially in this floor plan with the, the amount of clothes storage you have with dual dressers, his and her wardrobes, mm -hmm. et cetera. We thought it made most sense to have it up there where your clothes are at. And then of course not infringe upon your garage space. Next up, these guys are going to talk about the specs. Specs. What is the, we said the unloaded vehicle weight? Uh, 16,800 16, pounds. 
and the GVWR will be 20K or 21K, depending on whether you go with the 7K or 8K axles. Mm -hmm. okay. And also a 3,600-pound pin weight. Okay, that's about the same as a 397. And the length, 44... 11. 44 11s, so just under 45 feet. So it's about a foot longer. The 397 after our model was made longer, right? Yeah, so we redesigned the 397... THS last year we stretched the grass to 13.6 and then made some other refinements in the bed and bathroom. So it's about the same then in length. Yeah, it's uh, just about a foot difference. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to people were asking, are we going to get the independent suspension from Moride put on this unit of ours? Heck yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we, we said when we got that, we'll never have another towable RV without the IS and right. that is true. And yes, we are getting the Moride slide trays and the handrail thing oh the new handrail yeah. option that they have all these cool things but we love everything that we've gotten from moride mm -hmm. and so heck yeah one. we're keeping that on the rv for sure so one of the big questions was because i very very briefly mentioned this will have a volta system and then just moved well, on because you so. said <laughs> we're not going to have a generator right okay so the Volta system debuted at the Tampa show last year and we got some video of it and talked a little bit about it. And it's kind of hard to explain, but it's basically an industrial type of power system. Our 10 Battleborne batteries give us 12 kilowatt hours. Well, the top end system from Volta is gonna give us 18 kilowatt hours. Now it's a completely different type of system than what we have, so it's gonna be interesting to test it out and try it. I'm sure you're gonna have fun and geek oh, out on it. Oh, I'm gonna geek it. out on it. <laughs> but we are doing the system that you yourself can also get, right? So there's right, gonna right. be a few different tiers and things. Yeah, there's gonna be an eight kilowatt hour, 12 kilowatt hour, and an 18 kilowatt hour. All of those will come with a dual 3200 or 3400 inverters, I think. The 18K will come with dual 3200, so it'll be a 50 amp replacement. Okay. The 6 and the 12 will be on a 3200. Okay. Yeah. A single 3200? Yes, sir. Okay. So as we get into our unit and start living with it and he starts playing around with things, we will give you more and more details mm -hmm. as we learn them ourselves. But this is a really cool option and we're excited to try it out doesn't mean you can't get a generator yeah because you can also the system is really designed so that your truck becomes a generator mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have a special alternator system put in the truck that's built by volta and designed for that and that thing supplies i think nine kilowatts when traveling and i think six kilowatts when at high idle mm -hmm. so a lot more than we got out of our 4500 generator uh, oh, sorry, I think we had a 5,500. 5,500. Yeah. Yep. So we're, we're getting, you know, a lot or better, especially while driving. Uh, again, we're going to have a full video on that right. once we get into all those. Yep. And speaking of our current 397, a lot of people wrote to us or emailed us asking if we were selling it. And we are. We haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do it yet. But once we figure that out, like Chad said at the beginning of the video, we're going to make an announcement first just to our newsletter um, mm -hmm. list of people who have signed up for that. So be sure to go to our website, changinglanesrv.com to sign up for it if you're interested in buying our RV. We've all put so much of our energy and our heart and soul into making this the best. And thanks again for all the feedback. I mean, like I said, there's no bad feedback. We want to hear it all. Yeah. It's really appreciative and at Grand Design, we listen. And because we listen, this is the result of it and we're really proud of it. And yeah. I just remembered that we saw the paint scheme yesterday. Oh, oh I that. can't wait. This is big. Big, big. Yes. We saw it in the paint shop. Two What's years ago? it? They don't know what it is. Oh, mm -hmm. the new paint scheme. Yes. The first round of the, the full body paint was good, but wasn't exactly what we wanted. And so we got a little bit lighter mm -hmm. silver, and we went recently. At Precision, and we saw it in the bay, but now it is here at Grand Design. It's still inside, so we don't get to see it with the sound on it, but we're gonna go check it out now. I see it, I see it peeking through. Wow, look how vibrant the colors are! That is dark and all that. Oh my gosh. If you have any questions besides the stuff we covered, put them down below. We'll try to get to all those. We get a ton, so we get to the ones we can. Uh, but do also read the comments because a lot of times some of you are, have already asked them and it's already been asked and answered a lot. Yep, so Good point. Yep. Uh, thank you, Lance, for hanging out with us and answering these questions and just for dealing with us for the past couple years. Always been fun, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> mostly. He lies, he lies. But we thank you. It is time for us to go to the opening ceremonies at the Owner's Rally here in Goshen, Indiana. So we are out for now. Hey, guys, if you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> exactly what he said. Thank you.
We now take a break for what, the coffee. What, is, what does it say? What is the um, for programming? What is it like? Uh, we, take they our use sponsors. The thing, yeah. We got one more comment, and I'm just not okay. sure That's what okay. I'm not sure what it means. And I was wondering if you had any idea. Somebody asked, or somebody said this. Do you know what that means? I um, think it means they're green with envy. Throw up in <laughs> your mouth. Um, they're so excited they puked. I think. So like, I think they're, they're, they're those are actually dollar bills because they're so excited to buy one. I think. <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It's yeah, the internet, yeah. so you know, it is the internet and we expect it, so it is what it is. We have to make, make light of it and laugh and, and have a good time. And if you need a full bath, then 397 still there. That's I what mean, he yep. just said, literally oh. just said. Is there a code here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Welcome to my world, that's man. <laughs> I was already thinking about what I was going to say. I, I was trying to play it off, so we just keep going. <laughs> like, There's no words. I don't know, I'm just, I'm not sure. Do you guys know what that means? Ha, 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 ha.